All right, we are to the last, yay, video uh, for reviewing AP statistics. We're going to be looking at transforming to achieve linearity, which was covered in the textbook in Chapter 10, Bach, Vellum, and DeVoe. So in the last video, we were talking about in Chapter 27, that before you do linear regression inference, you have to have data um, for which a linear model is appropriate. And so you checked that when you checked the liner conditions uh, particularly uh, L and E. You were looking at equal variance in the residual plot, no pattern in the residual plot, and uh, data that was sort of kind of linear, okay, when you looked at the scatter plot. And so if it's those conditions aren't met, obviously you can't do the linear regression inference. Uh, so are you completely out of luck? Well, not necessarily just yet. You may be able to straighten the scatter plot through a re-expression, okay? Now, in your textbook, we did talk about using curved regression models like quadreg or power reg, like uh, fitting a quadratic curve to the data or an exponential or a logarithmic to the data. Um, you're unlikely to be asked to do that on the AP exam. Um, if anything occurred about it, you might um, more likely be reading some computer output and analyzing some graphs. Um, but there may be nothing on that at all on the AP exam. But it would be extremely unlikely. It's guaranteed pretty much that there will be uh, something on the AP exam about straightening a scatter plot through re-expression. Okay, so um, let's make up some data and let's do some re-expressing. Okay, so I'm going to go into list one. Actually, yeah, I talked about naming lists on the calculator. Let me just review that really quick. Um, although for the purposes of this video, just for time constraints, I'm not going to use the name list. But if we talked about you might want to use name lists for putting the original data in so that you have six lists to play with in looking for your re-expression. So to do that, you have to be up on the names of his lists here, okay? Go up to the name of L6 and then over, and then this list that may not have been there will suddenly appear, a blank list. And then you can type in the name of it if you want. Now, if you already have one there and you don't want it anymore, um, delete it. Okay, so clear, enter, maybe and go up to the name of the list, and delete, and then you can type in a new list. Okay, so I could name this whatever I wanted and then start putting data in there. Okay, but for now I'm just gonna use L1 and L2. Okay, so in L1, I'm just gonna put about um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, oops, I skipped one. How did I do that? Go back. Up. Oh, I wanted 12, not 21. 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, maybe those are years since something. I don't know. And then my Y list, I'm going to put um, how about 2, 1 squared. I'm going to put square data in so that it will be obviously not linear when we look at it. So, and then 2 squared would be 4, but let me double that. So there's some kind of pattern here. 8, and then 3 squared would be 9, and double that, and then 10. I'm just making up data that is definitely not straight and definitely does have some other kind of pattern to it, okay? Normally you would just be given data to do this with. And then 5 squared is 25, double that, we get 50, okay? And then... Uh, 5 squared, well, I skipped one. I want to do 16 times 2, which is what, 32? Okay, and then 50. And then 36 times 2, what, 74? And then uh, 49 times 2 would be 98. And 64 times 2, so what is that, 128? And then nine time, uh, 81 times 2, so that'd be 162. And then 100 times 2. And then 121 times 2. I think I could probably just do that. Yep. And then 144 times 2. And then 169 times 2. And 196 times 2. And 225 times 2. Okay, so this is data that's obviously squared, but let's say we didn't know that. So we'll go to Linreg. 
and look at the original scatter plot. L1, comma, L2, comma, vars, y vars, function y1. Okay, so this is the line of best fit. Not a terrible R and R squared. Let's go look at the scatter plot though. Okay, so let's change this to L1, and we'll change this to L2, and we'll go zoom nine. Okay, so I'm seeing an obvious pattern here of the uh, points versus the line, right? These are above, all below, all above. That's a clear sign that the linear model is not a good idea, even though R and R squared weren't terrible. Um, but it should really jump out to us when we look at the resid plot. I've already done the regression, so I should have the correct uh, resid list in there. And so I'll go and put it in there, and we'll have a look at that. Oh yeah, that is definitely not a random looking resid. It is very, very curved. This line here is just because I hadn't shut this off. You can shut that off if you want by going to the equal sign and hitting enter, or you could just delete it if you didn't need it anymore. Okay, so when I go back and look at that again, that's not random at all. Hmm, I think I should not use a linear model. I might need to straighten. Okay, so let's say we had no clue what to do to straighten. Well, we had talked about uh, this ladder of powers, okay? Uh, the top one on the ladder was squaring the y's, and then the next one was taking the square root of the y's, um, and then somewhere in between these was your original data. And then another one down the list was taking the log of the y's, and then negative one over square root of y, negative one over y, um, and then also on the next page they had talked about log of x, log of x and y. And so those were a list of all the different ones that the textbook author suggested you try for straightening. And in general, he put them in order in the list so that if you go up the list, it bends it one way, and if you go down the list, it bends it the other way. Okay? And so if you're trying a re-expression and it's, you know, it, it's taking that curved plot and it's starting to bend it the right direction, but you pick one and it bends it too far, maybe go back a little bit up one up the ladder or if it's bending it further in the wrong direction then go back you know the other way on the ladder okay so let's say we had no clue where to start so we'll just pick something okay so I'm gonna say I don't know where to start so I'm gonna start in about the middle I'm gonna start with the log of the y's okay, so my y's are L2 so that's the log of L2 okay so there's that and I'm gonna go into my scatter plot then and let's have a look, see does it look any better. Hmm, well that's definitely bent. Okay, so I can't remember which direction my original scatter plot was bent, so I don't know if this is bent the wrong way or, you know, just further, or whatever. So let me just go a little bit in either direction of this. So let's say the next one after log of y's was negative 1 over square root of y. Okay, so let's see if that's any better. Okay, so remember this is bent up. So I'm going to go try a negative 1 over the square root of y, and we're going to see what happens here. So negative 1 divided by square root of L2, because that's where my y's are. All right, let's go look at that scatter plot. L4. Oops. That's even more bent in the wrong direction, right? So I know I need to go the other direction on the ladder. Okay, so instead of going further down from log to negative 1 over square root of y, I should have gone up the ladder. And so maybe I should be trying, hmm, how about square root of y? So let's try that. So we'll go to stat edit, and in L5, I'm going to put the square root of y. So it's the square root of L2. And let's go look at that scatter plot. Whoops. I wanted zoom 9, not just 9. Well, that looks a lot better. Okay, that looks very, very straight. So I think I've probably hit on a good re-expression. So let's go ahead and do the linear regression for
for our re-expressed data. So that was L1 versus L5, which is the square root of the y's. Okay, so common bars, y bars, function y1. Okay, so now we've got even better R and R squared than what we saw to begin with. What's even better is that I can see that the line is actually fitting the data much better. And of course, don't forget to check the residual plot. That's very important. So we'll go and look at resid, because I've just done the re-expression. So it's a new resid list, Z9. And that's looking better. Oh, I've got something else in there that I want to get out. Okay. So hmm, maybe there is something better than the square root of y, because you see there is some kind of pattern to this, right? Looks like it's going generally downhill still. Um, instead of being random, and of course there's just one oddball in there. Did I type in a number weirdly when I was doing my data to begin with? Maybe I did. Okay, so maybe there is something better than the square root of y. Hmm. Okay, and so I could try maybe y squared, or I could, you know, play around some more. Maybe this will be the best model that I can come up with. And so now you see how uh, the game is played. Okay, maybe I want to try y squared. I've got one more list here before I have to start deleting lists, so I'll go ahead and, and do it. So let's do um, L2 squared, and let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm going further up the ladder. Somehow I don't think this is going to work, but eh, we'll, just, we'll just experiment. And obviously that's very, very curved. Okay, so the one that came closest to straightening out of all the ones that we found was the square root of y. Um, but we didn't try everything yet. We didn't try log log. Okay. Um, so I might try a few more things before because I had a little bit of concern about that residual plot before I settled on it. Hopefully on the AP exam, they'll give you one where um, you won't see any pattern in the residuals when you hit on the right one. Okay, but if in doubt, to go with the best, even if it's not perfect, unless they give you the option to choose none of them and you can say that none of them work, but that's, again, that's unlikely. Okay, and again, it is also unlikely that you'll have to use a curved model instead of a re-expression, but you might be asked to interpret one. Okay, so finally, we, we decided on the square root, right? So let me go back, let's pretend we decided on the square root. I don't know if we really did. But let's look at that equation. And so it was list 1 versus list 5, right? OK, so this equation here says y equals 1.43x minus 0.211. But we had changed the y list, right? The y list that we actually used was L5, which was the square root of y. So when you write down your regression equation, it shouldn't say y equals mx plus b. It should say uh, square root of y equals mx plus b, or ax plus b, whatever letters you're using. Okay, and again remember that we would usually write variable names instead of these, so maybe this was, I don't know, uh, pinheads predicted equals 1.43 uh, times zygotes plus negative 2.11. Of course, I'm obviously just making stuff up here, but you would just plug in the words. And so when you were using the model to make a prediction, look, so I plug in 5 for the number of zygotes, and I'm trying to get a number of pinheads out. When I plug 5 into this equation, all right, so I do 1.43 times 5 minus 0.211, or whatever that y-intercept was. Okay, so this is my not my number of pinheads, right? This is the square root of pinheads, so to get pinheads I actually need to square it, right? And so the model would predict 48.15 pinheads for um, five zygotes, okay? So just be careful when you're using the model that you do any manipulations of the equation that you would need to do, okay? And we've already talked about all the things that you need to be aware of when using models, like make sure um, to avoid extrapolation, make sure you know how to analyze residuals and interpret slope and interpret y-intercept and all that stuff because all the linear regression stuff you've learned applies here as well. It's just that the main focus of chapter 10 is on re-expression in particular. 
That concludes AP Statistics in total.